everybody, I'm Harriet Cameron, host of Down to Earth with Harriet Cameron, where we believe that the best is yet to come. So join us as you watch this broadcast and follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Visit my website, www.harrietcameron.com. And remember to watch us on Sundays and Tuesdays right here on Preach the Word Network. Be blessed. Hey, everybody. Hey everybody, this is Harriet Kamek with Down to Earth, a host of Down to Earth, the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, I want to talk about something with you that sometimes in life, just you, just you need to speak over yourself, right? I know this is a now word because I felt the importance of it and felt the resonance of it as it resonated with my spirit, that there are times that you can't find someone to encourage you. You might be in the midst of a situation and it looks dark and it looks foreboding and it looks like you'll never get out of it. And right at that moment, there is no one else that you can call or text or reach out to and just to talk to someone. And so often in our world today, we find that, especially here in America, there are more and more people who are single. There are more and more people who are recovering from divorce or who have gone through divorce or some sort of separation. So there are more people living alone. And sometimes when you live alone, the chances are you don't have someone to share with, to share the experiences of life with. And so you find yourself going through situations and you don't have someone you can call or text or you feel as if there's no one who cares about you. Well, in that moment, the word of God has come to find a scripture, to encourage us, to motivate us and to keep us going. And so I have a word for you today. And it is speak over yourself. And I want to share this word with you because it's something that I myself have often found myself. And you know me by now, when I come to you to talk, it's something that I have experienced. It's something that I can impart to you because I have a lived experience with it. I have experienced it myself. So I want to share with you and we're going to go into the word. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about some of the activities here at Harriet Kamek Ministries. One of the things that we do is we run a shelter for women who have experienced sex trafficking and human trafficking. Our organization is called the Exodus Foundation. That's right, the Exodus Foundation. You can find us on the web at theexodusfoundation.com. And what we do is we provide services to women who have experienced sex trafficking and women who have experienced human trafficking and who are simply running away from violent episodes in their lives, much like our friends in Afghanistan are running from lifelong exposure to violence. We pray for them. We pray for those who have been hurt and those who are seeking relief and comfort. Well, that's what we do. So I'm asking you to send us a donation to help us to do this work. I know that these are times when our monies are stretched in every direction, but I'm asking you to kindly think of us as you write your budget out and send us a donation. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask. So as you ask God to bless your budget, ask him to bless our budget as well and send us a donation. My information is running across the screen. And when you do, I'll send you my gift to you, my book, Musings of a Spirit. It will bring you relief and comfort during those times. Thank you so much for your continued support here at Harry Camp Ministries and be blessed. So I wanna talk with you today about speaking over yourself. And I know that this is a time when there's so much going on in our world. You know, the news is filled with images of war. We pray for our troops in Afghanistan. Just this week, our troops were hurt. And we pray for the families who now have to deal with the loss and the mourning that we as a nation are going through. Afghanistan is someone else's country. And think about the sacrifice that our troops are making, setting aside their own comfort, their own lives that they could live here in America and imparting to others, fighting for someone else to have their own freedom. That is the greatest love of all. They're embodying the love of Jesus Christ when he sent out. This is why perhaps I love America because for this very reason that we continue to say that even though we have our own internal wranglings and we disagree with one another vociferously, and we disagree with one another and we go through all the stages and all the processes that our democracy has to offer when we disagree with one another. 
But at the end of it all, we come together and we say, if someone else is hurting and someone else is suffering, we're going to stand in the gap for them. That is the greatest love of all. So we pray for our troops. We pray for those who are hurting, those who are hurt in Middle Tennessee, those who are experiencing Hurricane Ida right now in Louisiana. We are praying for you that God will come to you and we're speaking over you that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that there will be relief and comfort brought to your circumstances. In Jesus name, God is going to effect a mighty release and a mighty relief to lift off the heavy burden and to pull up straps on the wickedness and on the stress and the forbearance. God is going to do it right in your circumstance today. This is the day. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice and you will be glad in the deliverance when the deliverance has come. And so I want to talk to you today about speaking over yourself. And this is something that I personally can relate to. And I can relate to it because I have lived it. Like so many of us, I have been in situations where sometimes there's nobody else but you. And this is why you have to know the Bible for yourself. When you know the scriptures, it has gentle application. The scriptures have application to your very circumstance. And I know for a lot of us, especially those of us who have been through colleges and education, you get to yourself and you say, I don't need that because education has all the answers. I don't need that because I've studied world religions and I've studied this. It's just another form of this. Da, 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 da. And then you mature. And you get to a stage where phenomena continues to happen. And you say to yourself, what is the greater purpose? Well, that's where faith comes in. That's where we start looking for answers to life. I, I would recently, just a few days ago, I had to drop my daughter off, my youngest daughter off at college. So it's another one of those things, empty nesting, right? There I go again, right? <laughs> and now I had to drop off my youngest child. Right? I have two daughters. My youngest child is now in college. Yes, on a college campus. Thank the Lord. Because 2020 was that year, wasn't it? And when I dropped her off, as I looked around, I saw a number of parents. And I said, are we all in the same boat? Some of whom are going back to homes where they don't know if their marriages will survive. The child was what held it together, was who held the marriage together. A number of people are going back to say, no, what do we do? Are we willing to live with one another for the rest of time? Can we live with one another? And yet for some people, they're going back to, it's just me. There I was <laughs> driving down the highway, having poured myself into my child, into both my children. There I was saying to myself, what do I do now? Where is the next chapter? I am so happy, <coughs> excuse me, that I had started my next chapter. So I could effortlessly, seamlessly go into it. There I was driving down the street and I heard myself say, speak over yourself. I had to encourage myself. So I want to take you into the scriptures today. It's found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. You ready? Here's what it says. It says, no temptation has overtaken you. I'm reading from the New King James Version. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. That means what you are experiencing is common to man. I experienced it myself. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. You know, that's where people get that tacky verse where they say, God will not give you more than you can bear. That's not actually what it means. What it means here is that the faithfulness of God will carry you through whatever it is that you are going through. But with the temptation, God will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That is the truth. That is the crux of the matter. Father, let us be hearers of the word and doers as well. Let me decrease so that you can increase. In the name of Jesus, let those who are hearing this word be empowered and be blessed by it. Work a mighty miracle in the lives of my friends and our viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. Here is the word of God that has come to help me. It was me just a few days ago, Thursday evening, driving down the street. There I was. I had just dropped my youngest daughter off at college, finally. It should have happened last year, but it didn't. Now that you have hindsight, 
they say 2020 is hindsight, 2020 vision is hindsight. <laughs> so now that I have the vision of it, I can say I'm grateful for the extra year that I had with her. It was a year filled with turmoil because she's young. She wanted to just go off to college and do what college kids do, right? But I got another year with her because once that clock starts, it's irreversible. Once they go to college, they don't come back. It's a different person who walks back in your door. A child left, but an adult returns. And once they go, that part of life is over. That part of childhood is over. Your child now is now an adult. And so what do you have to deal with them as an adult? So I got the chance to, and for many of us, our children are a major part of our lives. We invest in them. We pray over them. We work with them. We encourage them. We have jobs, we have careers, but our children are integral to us just as well. And so you find yourself, I'm driving down the street, and I felt like, so what's next? And I had to say to myself, speak over yourself. And I had to encourage myself in the Lord. And I'm saying to you today, you might find yourself in a season of transition. We're entering fall here in the United States. So we're entering into a season of transition. Fall, for many of us, is always a season of transition. It kickstarts the season of transition. For our friends who are Jewish, it's all it's Yom Kippur. The Day of Atonement is coming. The 15th or the 16th, I believe this year is the 15th of September, is the Day of Atonement. Be careful, mark that on your calendar. Wherever you are, sit down and pay some attention to that. We are Hebraic as well as we are called Judeo-Christians. That means we believe in Judaism because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is also the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The descendant of Abraham is King David, who is the great, 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 great grandfather of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are Judeo-Christians. So we pay attention as much to the Hebraic calendar as we pray to the Gregorian calendar on which our dates are based. The Roman calendar that was adopted after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we pay attention to these because these are marked events in our lives. Having children, we have children, they're born, you get pregnant, you plan to have a baby, the baby comes. It's an event, it's a life event. They go to kindergarten, that's a life event. They go to elementary school, a life event. Going to high school, that's when it starts. The countdown starts because they only have four years before they go to college. Going to college is another life event. There are other life events in our lives. We get married, we get divorced, parents leave, parents die. There are so many other life events. You might be in the midst of a life event yourself. Maybe you're experiencing loss. Maybe it's a job loss that you have lost for a job that means the world to you. It was income. It was everything to you. Maybe it was even more than income. It was a sense of independence. It was also a sense of purpose. Maybe they demoted you at work. Maybe you just lost someone you cared about, a friend, a family member. Maybe even a spouse. Maybe a parent, an in-law. Nevertheless, the ties that bind you are still strong. And the pain of loss is everywhere. I am saying to you today, speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we don't want to be. We find ourselves in situations that are hurtful and we wonder, why am I here? Why can't it move forward? Why isn't it shaking? I'm a living witness. For years, I used to say, I felt like I was running in place. Like no matter what I did, I could move heaven and earth. It was not moving the way that I wanted it to. Sometimes these things happen. It's almost as if you're in a holding pattern. When you find yourself in those kinds of situations, I encourage you to be patient. Sometimes all you can do is exhale. Take a deep breath and exhale and hold on for the ride of your life. It's a storm. You will get through it, but... You want to get on the other side intact. You want to get on the other side with your mind intact because your mind is your greatest investment. You've got to feed your spirit. You don't want your spirit to become knocked down, to be burnt, to be burnt out and to just be angry all the time because that is hurting you. 
when your spirit is off, it's going to affect your mind. You know, we human beings like to talk about science. And there are people who don't believe in science. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. We ourselves, our bodies, are a living scientific experiment. How else can you explain that we get up and have to go to the bathroom? How else do you explain that we eat food and it comes out another way looking something else? Hello. How else do you explain that we experience moods? There is a thing in our brains called our serotonin levels. S-E-R-A-T-O-N-I-N. -E Whenever you find that your ability to cope with situation is not working, your serotonin levels are low. Our serotonin levels are that part of our brain that says it's going to be okay. Something happens and you feel like it's going to be okay. When your serotonin levels are low, what happens is you find that it's harder and harder to cope. We find this a lot in trauma survivors, people who have survived trauma and violence like myself. I used to say it like this, that my well ran dry. My ability to cope had just ran dry. There were so many things that I had to pick myself up out of and tell myself it's okay, that one day my well just ran dry. Well, what do you do when your well runs dry? Here's what I did. People told me to go try this drug, try Prozac, try this, try that. I said, I have a better one. I went to the word of God. And I started to pray. Now, I, you know, even my own family will say, but everybody can't do that. Everybody can't pray. That's what worked for me. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Because the recovery from prayer is hope. And hope is a powerful thing. Had I run to all those other synthetic drugs, and don't get me wrong, there are some of us who need drugs. But had I run to it, I would have had more issues emanating from it. So I ran to prayer. I started to find out how can I believe God more? What do I need to do? And I found that it was in me. I had to start believing in hope. Hope is powerful. That's what the word of God continues to give. Here's what it says. It says, but even God will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able to. That, But with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That's your hope right there. Even in the midst of everything going wrong, God is making a way for you to see beyond it so that you can hope again, so that you can cope. What has happened? Sometimes to us, what happens to us is time and time again, everything that happens, it destroys our hope. It's almost as if it's shaking and attacking our hope. We went through a horrible summer last year. There was so much turmoil in our country. There was the coronavirus, then there was the George Floyd protest against injustice, against racial injustice. Last summer was turmoil. We couldn't go anywhere. This summer, we were all looking forward to, okay, so they got a vaccine. We can go to Europe. We can go to Jamaica. We can go to Mexico. We can just take off. Here comes the summer of horrors. It started with rains. It started with floods. It started with wind damage. Almost as if it is seeking to destroy our hope. Just when we thought we had a corner on the coronavirus and we could control it by vaccinating as many people as possible, here comes different variants. I am a believer that somebody created that virus. It's almost as if every time you come with a vaccine, they find something else that is resistant to the vaccine. Nah, it's not natural. It's, it, it's, it's not natural. Do you see where our mind processes are going? And that's so we're sitting there and you're looking at the eviction moratorium expiring. And you are like, oh my goodness, all these folks are going to be homeless in just a few minutes. And we start losing our hope. Hope is powerful sometimes. That's all we have to get out of a situation. This is why I turn to the word of God. This is why I have to know the scriptures. This is why it's incumbent upon me to know the scriptures. And to believe God. Come on, say this. I believe God. Say, I believe God. Come on. I believe God. Come on. Say, I believe in hope. Say, I have hope. I have hope that this situation will turn around. 
I have hope that what I'm going through right now will not be the end of me. I have hope. I believe God, it will change. Come on, speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Sometimes there's nobody else to do it for you. Sometimes you ever call people and they get tired of you because you're always calling them when something goes wrong that you have to hold back. You can't call them anymore. You can't see it anymore. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Come on, people. Pick up that phone. Call me at that number. Encourage yourself. Even if you don't get to be where you want to be, maybe what you want is not what God wants for you. Maybe what you think should happen is not what it should be. God always has a greater and a better plan because he sees the big picture. You and I just see a microcosm. That's what the Bible says in the book of Corinthians. That's what Paul says. We look through an opaque glass. We can't see the big picture, but God can wipe that screen off and he sees the big picture and here you are believing God that this man, this woman is the one for you and God is like, no, you don't know what can happen. In three years, they might be dead. In three years, they might give you a disease. Come on. In three years, they might not be the one. God has a better plan. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I can't begin to tell you what that meant for someone like me. I was a survivor. I was an immigrant. I didn't have anything. I had no stability in a country that I wasn't born in, that I had no family, no relatives. My nearest relatives were 1,500 miles away in Detroit, and I lived in, in Orlando, Florida, right in the midst of Central Florida. I had nothing but hope. I could not believe that I had two children, found myself displaced. Had, I had to sit there one Sunday and try to figure out, yes, it was a Sunday morning just like this. And I had to sit there and figure out what am I going to do with my life, with my two children. It's a good thing I knew the scriptures, my friend. It's a good thing that I could call on God and believe God. Here I stand today. Look at this wall behind me. There are my lampposts. That's what I have done in the ensuing years since then. It was my hope that kept me. This is why I can tell you that no matter what you're going through, God has a way of escape. Sometimes the escape might not be physical. The escape might just be in your mind. Your escape might just be a thought. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Pick up that Bible and read it. I have come to you in many ways and exposed you to different scriptures. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. He will be exalted in your life. That is not something for us to say that God is looking for glory. No, what God is looking for is that he's going to show you how he's going to deliver you. And when you see it, you can look up to the heavens and say, there is a God in this here Gilead in Jesus name. That's why Psalm 121 says, I will look up onto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. I don't know who this word is for, but the Lord shall preserve you from your goings out and your comings in now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Know the scriptures. Encourage yourself. Pick up the book. You can download it. You say that the Bible is too combustible. It's too big to walk around with. Well, I don't know about you, but I keep one in every car that I've ever owned in the name of Jesus, right? But no, I have a personal companion. The Bible is on my phone. It's an app on my phone. Download it. You, there are a million translations of the Bible. Pick it up. Choose one that resonates with you and read these scriptures every day. You want encouragement? Go to www.google.com. Look for scriptures that can encourage you. You'll find a myriad of scriptures. You will be so shocked to discover that there is a word for every season of your life. That is the love of God that is shed abroad for all of us, just like he's shedding his love abroad. The people in Afghanistan right now who are suffering, who are trying to flee violence, find a country called the United States, find troops 
from a country called the United States way over on the other side of the world. We have nothing to do with Afghanistan. They don't produce anything that we are dependent on. But here we are saying, you know something? Injustice is injustice anywhere. Let us go help somebody else and pull them out of it. Amen. That's the love of God that is shed abroad. That is the love of Jesus Christ who lives within us. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Look at me. I want you to say these words as, as I come to a close because they're giving me the wrap up signal. And I want you to say these words, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have hope. I have Jesus. I am loved. Say it. Come on. I am loved. I am healed. I am well. Say it one more time. I am loved. I am healed. I am well. I speak over your situation right now in the name of Jesus Christ with all that we have said. I speak over your situation right now and I command a blessing onto your life. I speak peace into your mind and I command this. Can you? Can I just for the next 30 seconds, I'm just going to say this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this person watching. I pray for my friend, my brother, my sister who is in need of help, the confusion in a doctor's room, in a doctor's office, the confusion in a hospital room. I break the power of it right now. In the name of Jesus, I rescind the death call. In Jesus' name, I rescind the call of disease. I break it up now. Father God, I speak momentary blessings. In Jesus' name, somebody's going to get an answer momentarily. In Jesus' name, we need a supernatural expeditious overnight deliverance for somebody who is in pain. I speak right now to lift that God is the lifter of your head in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer and you believe in the words that we have just spoken in first Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, know he that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. He will come to you and he will bless you and he will deliver you. This week, you are going to see it. And when you do, give me a call. Reach out to me and let me know. My name is Harriet Kamek. Thank you so much for joining with me today on this edition of Down to Earth. Be blessed, everybody. For watching Down to Earth with Harriet Kamek. For more information on our products and our books, visit my website at www.harrietkamek.com. And remember to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook as you receive daily inspirational messages. And why don't you send us a seed? If the Lord lays it on your heart to send us a seed, remember the scripture in Ephesians 3 and 20 that says, Unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly for all that you can ask or think for so many years. That scripture has enlivened me and empowered us here at Harry Kamek Ministries. So thank you so very much. And remember to watch us again on this network, on Preach the Word Network, as we continue to talk about the issues that matter. Be blessed. Hey there, everybody. This is Harriet Kamek, the host of Down to Earth. I'm an author and speaker, and I wanted to talk with you for just a few seconds about what the scriptures have done for me. There's a scripture in the Bible, and it's found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20. And it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, according to, about, according to all that we can ask or think.